Well, it's about eight o'clock on a very, very beautiful sunny morning. I had planned to be up there for sunrise, but I overslept. But it's no hardship, is it? Because we've still got the snow and we're still getting the full effect, as it were. I've walked out the door, I've walked from home, so I'm only 10, 15 minutes outside, out the door, to be honest. I was, of course, up here yesterday. Yesterday was the first day when you can actually get out to enjoy all this snow. So that's when I had my snowy romp up East Loman and around the Falkland estate. But today's forecast to be sunnier than that. So I've got another day's holiday off work. Two days ago, I asked for the next two days off so I can make the most of it. Because you would, wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do that? These are actually my tracks from yesterday. And today, gonna be, don't have too much of a plan really, gonna head up around the back of East Loman and come up over the top and down. And then I imagine going up and over West Lomond, which is looking pretty good there just now. In case you missed the bite-sized blog I did from here yesterday, we got 25 centimetres of snow here in the Lomond Hills, which is about on a par with the depth of snow we got during the beach from the east in February and March 2018. But that all fell on a very strong wind and with the easterlies, the way it's set up, it was very grey. So it's very uneven cover, even though we had a lot of snow. So you had some of the fields that were completely scoured, whereas you get drifts eight or nine feet deep. Ooh, there's a hare, the hare. Sorry, do get distracted. Anyway, yes, some drifts were very big, some fields were scoured, which means that it was quite difficult to make progress across the countryside in any consistent manner. Like having snowshoes, for example, because you have to keep taking them off, putting them on, taking them off, putting them on. And like I say, it was grey, but now we've got about the same amount of snow, but it's uniform and it's, it's probably the nicest snow we've had since January 2013 and going back to December 2010. It's that nice, soft, powdery stuff that you can kick through really nicely. Now, just looking up here, East Lomond has been the domain of skiers and boarders the last few days. What are they doing? Are they on skis? I can't really tell. Or boards, I think they might just be walking. Oh no, they're on skis. That's pretty much all who's been up here, actually, I've seen because we've got that much snow. And normally when it comes with a really strong wind, uh, one side of the hill gets scoured and the other one gets buried. But like I say, it's been quite uniform, so everyone's got pretty much free reign of which lines they take. And I can't remember what the Met Office said at the start of the year. I think everyone was sort of saying it was gonna be a front-loaded winter with cold at the start, and finishing mild. And so far it's been consistently cold. To put it into context, I've got, I've had snow cover up here, this is where I stay, up here. 25 days in January had at least one centimetre of snow on the ground at 9am, which is sort of the measure you use. The January before in 2020, it was just one day. The mean temperature for January just gone has been 1.4 and then the year before it was 5 point something, so significantly colder. We had the snow arrive in December on the 29th and since then there's only been four, five, six, seven days that we haven't had snow on the ground up here. And only one day so far this February, it's remarkable. Just to underline how cold it has been. This morning, Grey Mars had minus 21.4, making it the coldest day, coldest morning, coldest night since um, December 2010, I think. 
very nice looking out over Glenrothes, which is tucked down there, and then coming out looking over sort of Mark Inch, and then east to Largo Law, which is all the way over there. It's nice to see the mists hanging down there though. You can just see that a massive silo popping out all the way over towards Cooper and then beyond that it's St Andrews. Just like yesterday it's freakishly quiet up here for a snowy morning. But this, uh, it might have a name but I just call it, we just call it the Aerials car park. But I don't know if it has an actual name. I've never found that out in 10 years of staying here. Oh, this really, really, really pisses me off. This recent, is it recent, this phenomenon of leaving, you know, breaking a sledge and then on the hillside, it's not, that's not litter. That's not litter to dump at a bin for the council to take away. Take it home and dispose of your bloody self. Should have said there was like, I don't know, there was 20 sledges broken up at Craig Mead a few weeks ago. And it's all over the country where I work in West Lothian at the bottom of the hill over there at the bottom of Cockleroy there's sledge carnage where people just leave it all where it's you know they, they leave it where it breaks it's like they go down smash and just get up and walk away in my day I don't know I had a wooden sledge I had a wooden sledge that was my dad's with metal runners that his dad had made for him you know, my, my granddad's sledge, and it lasted forever. And even the plastic ones we had were like, that's, you know, thick, hard plastic, not the shitty, flexible stuff you get these days. Moan, moan, moan. Sorry. <laughs> Lots of grouse, red grouse around today, and there were yesterday, really conspicuous in this sort of cover, and they're all keeping as still as possible so I've disturbed quite a few on the path already three or four have flown away from me as I've walked past when I came up this route yesterday there were two tracks maybe I think two people have been up and a few snowboarders had come down from the fence at the top just here such a difference today I mean it's it's well trampled somebody's even tried to get northerly some uh, some vehicles up here as well and you can well understand why everyone wants to come up because, well, it's amazing, isn't it? And yet, I think, personally for me, the incentive when you get these big falls is to head out first thing on the first morning which, so that you get to experience it unblemished. Although, admittedly, some parts of this and some parts of some walks I've done recently it's actually been handy like the one up in the Dooney Hill that was quite handy that someone had broken trail <laughs> so, so it can be useful sometimes <sighs> fence half buried pretty much step over it <clears throat> well you can see how it's only really skiers and snowboarders who've been up here in any great extent and you can't blame them. You've got to think if you're a snow sports enthusiast and you can't get up to the ski centres because they're all shut because of coronavirus. It's just cruel, isn't it? They've got the best snow in years. Especially Glen Shee, which has had a torrid time in recent times. They never seem to have got the snow. And this time they're in the sweet spot. Metres of the stuff. It's a real shame. You know? I really feel for them. So... I'm sure everyone's thankful in the same way I think a lot of us are, so I certainly am. All this snow making the travel restrictions bearable for them. It's a godsend, isn't it? Suffice to say, it's much more wind scoured on this side because that's where the wind's coming from the east and the north. 
so it's quite bare intermittent cover here but on the other side it's well loaded but that's the view opening up across Fife looking out down West Falkland down there looking out through the Howe all the way to Cooper and the coast it's wonderful <laughs> Fife looking like this all the way out to the coast that is quite unusual I mean you do get snow widespread at low levels but it's gone the next day or it's gone that afternoon it falls at over you know it's something when it falls overnight and it all goes so it's quite it's quite unusual to have this depth of cold bringing cold air temperatures over so that it snows in the warmer coastal areas and then for it to stay a few days that is quite unusual and it looks like it's going to actually it's going to stay until at least looks like Sunday more snow coming in on Saturday potentially as the milder air tries to come in from the west and there that's us you can see the shadow of East Loban down there well this all looks a bit different since I was here yesterday no one had been through here uh, and now you can see it is just really beautiful snaking lines of skiers and snowboarders all the way down but you can see how how much snow there is down there it's that thing where it's as I was saying on the bite size blog it's unusual to see because all this down here is heather so it's quite unusual to be able to come off the hill and strike through with, over snow that is actually going to take your weight without you crushing through to all that space underneath the heather in that very irritating way that it does but of course there was snow the week before and so a lot of that would have stayed here so that's that snow that fell last week about the foot of snow we had up here and then there was a slight thaw so certainly up here on this stuff down on the heather they would have had still had a base I suppose which is consolidated and packed the heather down and then all the new snow has fallen on top and it makes it a very nice surface to walk across so it's nice when I get to the bottom of the hill just to be able to strike out in any direction over the heather which I haven't been able to do for ooh, 10 years I think it probably was that time in 10 years ago in December when we had completely unblemished snow cover for days and days and days and it just kept accumulating and packing down really nice Sort of, sort of proper alpine stuff. Yeah, so this is really unusual to be able to do this. Quite rare in these parts. But of course, so welcome. It does seem hard to believe that all of this thing is it's here and it's been cold for so long that it could ever come to an end. But it's going to be cold today, cold tomorrow on Friday, and then Saturday there's more snow coming in from the southwest because there's one of those battleground situations forming and then on Sunday oh, I dread to think it's going to be it's forecast to be 8-9 degrees and it hasn't been 8-9 degrees since third week in December maybe uh, or maybe early January I'm not sure but it's been it's been weeks it certainly hasn't been above five six degrees for almost four weeks uh, but to get sort of up to eight nine and then potentially then into double figures it hasn't done that for a very long time so it's gonna feel for want of a better word horrid I'm <laughs> really really not looking forward to it you know everything going green again and just feeling that sort of damp wet mildness you get in winter because you know that's what it's going to be as soon as you get the mildness back in from the Atlantic that's what happens so I don't know there's a sort of whispers again of a possible reload of the cold 
going into late February, early March, but we'll see. I don't think anyone can really seriously complain with the winter we've had so far. It's been incredible. Uh, but yeah, I'm certainly not looking forward to any, any let up in conditions. But really contrast it with what we typically get in winter these years, in recent years, of having quite frequently getting temperatures into double digits. That's not remotely unusual. And then was it last February or the February before? I think it was 2019, wasn't it, when we had the first time 20 degrees has ever, had ever been reached in a winter month. Not up in Scotland, but it was 18 or something up in the Northwest Highlands, 20 degrees down south in, a, in February in a winter month. Con you know, compare that to now. This is pretty decent. Well, this is a track which goes past Little Ballow Farm and Ballow Reservoir. Uh, decided I wasn't going to go up the main track up to West Lowland because it's been so well trodden that, yeah, it's not quite the same experience, I suppose. So I'm coming this route, which goes to the south of West Lowland and then goes up to a series of rocks called the Devil's Burdens. So that's where I'm going. But this is here, no one's been through. And this is re usually a really popular route. People come up from Leslie and come around Harper Lee's Reservoir, which is over there, and then come back up here. All kinds of loops from Craig Mead of Leslie feature this path. But it's quite incredible that no one's been up here. Well, it's a bit nice, isn't it? It's a bit, it's getting a bit softer underfoot because the sun, sun's getting to work. So it's not quite as powdery. It's a bit, it's getting a bit soft. So just going nice and slow. It's, it's only 10 past 11, so I've got plenty of time. Ultimately, I want to get up there at the top of West Lomond, but Devil's Burdens are sort of round the side and then I'm planning to come up West Lomond from the back so we can get a look down to the Bannis Stone along the escarpment because that should be quite loaded with snow, I thought. <sighs> but perfect conditions. I mean, there's, there's still, it's not quite alpine because you've got you've still got this breeze. It's just taking the edge off it. I thought, because my hands, if I, if, when I stop moving, my hands are getting a bit cold. But it's glorious, just glorious. actually one one way up it's actually a good way to come down West Lomond sometimes going up from Craig Mead and then coming down and along all this ridge that's quite a nice way around I've not seen that looking like that before though very nice right on we go well it was way too quick to uh, for me to react to film it, but I just surprised, well, a snipe, first of all, out of some rushes, but then there was a short-eared owl just perched up here, and it's flown over there, and it's just still sort of hunting over there. It's just keeping a safe distance away from me. Ah, so there is stuff out here. It's really nice to see anything living, actually. So it's sort of like a desert under these conditions. Although all the footprints and tracks hint at life going on as normal despite the snow. Well this is the Devil's Burdens ridge line and the rocks sort of are along this, this side here. It starts off gentle at first but they get a bit more impressive further up. West Lomond is that enormous flank over there. Oh, it's quite hard going. Thankfully, this part has been scoured at least, so after a 
about an hour long trudge just to get to this point from Little Barrow. It's quite nice to have crunchy, icy walking for a change. Well, these are the devil's burdens. Big boulders that have been left and sculpted and they're actually, it's quite fun to sort of weave in and out of them, which simply can't do today because it's uh, corniced up and it's hard to tell where exactly the slope ends and the snow begins. Cheers! Mm. It's as good a place as any to stop for a little bit. <sighs> it's a good place to stop actually because usually the winds well, unless when it's coming from the west, which is most of the time actually from that way. You get the north and the east wind, especially in spring. It's a really nice place to come in spring because these are rocks are all protected as they are to some extent today. Um, but I love spending a lot of time up here. It's quite quiet and you can find weird shapes and faces in the rocks. There's one that's kind of a tower of four. It's like four, look, it's not, it's one big rock, but the way it's eroded, it looks like four big rocks, a tower of them standing on top of each other, which, which is pretty cool. And there's also one that's almost like, like a cantilever, like a, looks like it's balanced. I'm sure it isn't, but it looks that way. And that, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. What else? And there's the one, there's one that looks almost like a dinosaur's face or, or a, a bird beak. Um, that one's more difficult for me to find. You always have to go rummaging for that one. And then there's the, the strange, almost like Easter Island heads, the faces that are tucked up here as well, which uh, that's quite extraordinary, really. So you know how you, you're, we're sort of primed to see faces in everything, aren't we? That's what that's what we tend to do. But those are quite strikingly obvious to me. I remember seeing those for the first time, and thinking, Has someone put those there. Someone carved those. I mean, they haven't. But it's like that, isn't it? You sort of see things that are so obvious, you think, someone must have put that there. Lovely views over to the Oak Hills today, all the way over there to uh, King's Seat and White Wisp and Tarmangi. Inner Dooney, is it Inner Downey? Inner Dooney? I forget. Inner Downey over there. And then looking over to Inner Dooney Hill in Kinross, where I've been spending so much time recently. That, of course, over there is Bishop Hill where I was the other week in that excellent snow which seems to have been the theme for weeks and weeks and weeks these are the east facing slopes which when I was up there a few weeks ago there were there was more snow than that because it was mostly coming in on a west wind wasn't it or a northerly uh, or northwest I can't remember but it's certainly all the snow had been dumped over on that side but now you can see most of it's been moved and it will all be over on the escarpment which you can't see just now. Do you know even taking in that into account the fact that there's, there's a certain amount of scouring that's gone on with the winds being quite strong the other day but generally speaking this, the cover is so uniform it's quite unusual because it typically in an average winter all our snow tends to come in from storms doesn't it? it gets deposited on really really strong winds and gales do you remember those storms those things we used to get half a dozen every winter that used to rattle through and shake your windows and just be completely miserable i haven't had one of those for ages not that i'm complaining you know the fact that this wind it's been a very calm winter with not many storms you know there have been a few named storms but they tend to be farther down south I think they've been spinning off down towards France and Spain, haven't they, rather than sort of barrelling over Scotland as usual because this high-pressure block over Scandinavia is preventing that from happening. So that is quite odd. That's quite that's been conspicuous by its absence has been the wind, and especially when the snow's been falling. The snow's been falling, hor you know, vertically, not horizontally. That's quite unusual. But I've got you know, just got this funny feeling everything's going to be reverting to type fairly soon. Okay, we see someone's taking steep way up gives you a nice sense of scale oh that doesn't look fun does it anyway not going to be heading up that way going to come around the back so i have to head over this way okay shall we continue It's nice to be up this end on the Devil's Burdens in, in snow. I don't think I've actually been in this end of the hill before when it's been as snowy as this. It's 
quite nice to see familiar places looking completely different. Well, I thought I might come just a little way down because it gives a really, really nice view back towards the whole series of rocks. It looks amazing today. I've never seen it looking like this before. Anyway, don't want to go too far down because I have to come all the way up again. someone's old ski tracks. I just see somebody skiing down the side of West Loman. I'm walking up to it looking like this. The kinds of activities you'd associate with much bigger hills farther north. Big hills, Ben Laws, Cairngorms, over by Glen Shee or something, ski touring over Glass Mall. You know, that's what, but it really feels like it. It feels just like that kind of place. I haven't seen it looking that good for a very long time. These are proper big, wintry, snowy hills. And it's only 520 metres high. But as has been the theme, recurring theme, feeling much bigger than it actually is. Well, look at this. This is the side of West Lomond that you don't tend to see unless you come well off the path. But just look at the size of these cornices that are starting to form on the escarpment. <laughs> That's incredible, eh? Looming over Fife like that. It just looks completely out of place. Probably one of the most impressive sights I've seen in the Lowman Hills actually in terms of just it feeling like a much bigger hill than it actually is. It feels so like it belongs way out there. It belongs with the white line of the Southern Highlands over there and the Cairngorms. It feels like it belongs over there. Something like this. This is the north facing escarpment. It runs all the way along and it's like I say, if you don't come off Path, if you don't come off the sides of hills, you don't see these things. So it's always worth exploring. Although in this case, not too close because that is quite a bulge going out. I've walked along here before, along this fence line. I do know how far out, I think it's grassy a bit of a way out, but I don't want to go any closer than this because that is quite a bulge down there. <laughs> I'm terrified. Of of dropping something, even a glove, you know, you'd have to go all the way down there to get it back. Anyway, just down there, you can see is that peculiar thing, that's the bunnet stain. That's this weird mushroom shaped rock. Quite improbable, this sandstone down there, really, really interesting. It's a nice walk up from Gateside, you get an amazing view of it. But that's it, that's the bunnet stain, which is sculpted by, it's weathering that's made it like that. It's quite a big, weird, rocky feature down there hidden away, I suppose, uh, under West Lomond. During the bunnet stain near Devil's Burden, there's all the other features on here. There's quite a lot to explore on West Lomond. More so in East, more so than on East Lomond, I'd say. I mean, I, I think East Lomond's probably my favourite of the two, just because it's it's my hill. It's the one I stay on, pretty much. So, I've got it's a soft spot for it. But in terms of bulk and just the things that you can explore on West Lomond, there's much more. There's more to explore on this side. For the adventurers, this is probably the most challenging direct route up West Lomond. You come up from the Bunnett Stain and just head this way and then, for want of a better word, you scramble up the grassy slope all the way up here. It's, uh, you're on all fours at some point. I mean, it's really, really steep. It's crazy steep. Uh, I, I go up it, I go off, I've gone up it a few times, but I, I hesitate to go down it because 
when it's wet it's an absolute nightmare i know people that have broken their legs and had to be airlifted off here so <laughs> yeah i'd be really really careful but and on these sort of conditions it would be you know <laughs> possibly even like ice axes and things like that proper proper winter climbing down there today but yeah even in summer it's a, it's a pretty gnarly scramble but that's the most direct steepest route up West Loban that's so well I know I'm a purist for walking through unblemished snow and picking my own line but at the end of the day, and for the last haul up the hill, I have no problem whatsoever about traipsing through whatever this is. Someone did down on a sledge. West Lowman's only, I say only, it's 520 metres, but it's only 86 metres, I think, higher than East Lowman. And if that doesn't sound much, and if if you were to walk 86 meters, it would take you no time at all if you just walked on the flat. 86 meters is nothing. And when it translates to a hill, it re two hills next to each other. If one of them is 86 meters higher, it doesn't sound much, but it's all that extra bulk that a hill has, and that's what West Lomond has compared to East Lomond. East Lomond's got probably, I'd, I'd say, the better view of the two because it's, it's all by itself, really. It's got more, more prominence on the landscape than uh, West has. But all the extra bulk that West Lomond has, it gives it, it's got more high ground, more plateau. Uh, there's more big flat spaces like this. There's just more scope for, you know, gathering the snow when it does fall. And because a lot of it is grass as well, it's not heather, like East Lomond. A lot of East Lomond lower down is heather, whereas up here it's mostly grass. So when you do get snow, it's, it's not that kind of snow that sits on top of heather and then gives way when you walk on it. It's, it just, it feels much, much bigger. It feels like a bigger hill. Um, I mean, it is, it is a bigger hill, but it, it, you know, 86 meters counts for a lot when you have that extra bulk. That's what I'm saying. So it's a good, it feels, it feels like it belongs way over there somewhere today in these conditions. What's nice actually, I mean the reason all that, that ridge was all snowed up is because we don't usually get this much snow from the east like this. I haven't seen it looking like that. I mean the snow usually comes from that direction from the southwest and so it's the east slopes and the north facing slopes of West Lowman that get heavily laden. And so you don't usually see the escarpment looking like that. It's a bit of a treat. Ah, they're out the wind now. I'm half tempted actually to... Because you know it's going to be windy up top. So maybe some coffee. I'm not sure it gets better than this. Really. A moment of calm before heading up there for the final bit. The summit's not far up there actually, it's just... Um, it will be cold, it's always cold up there. It's always scoured of snow and it's always cold. Ah, so it's nice to enjoy a bit of warmth while it's here. Actually you can see the clouds coming in quite quickly now, so I'm not gonna lose the sun just yet, but it's not far off, it will come in quite quick, so I think we've had the best of the weather today. It's just so nice to see Scotland in general looking like this. Proper winter for everybody. I don't know if you can make out the hills on the horizon. Nice white line all the way along. Going past Ben Honzi to Shallions over there. And then all the way over to Farragut Hill and to Beneglow in the distance over there. I do wonder when we'll see it like this again. Because it has been sunshine snow extensive like this. It's been 10 years. It doesn't happen very often. Need it more actually. I've seen a few people commenting on Twitter saying, oh, I don't normally like snow but this year has been really nice and I don't know if that's something to do with lockdown. Or just, I think it's more the fact that it actually has been cold 
and the snow's hung around in January and February and it's been cold and it's been crisp you can kind of weather weather you can actually get out and enjoy it and I think that's what I think that's what people like it makes people happy I mean not everyone obviously not everybody there's people who just can't stand it <laughs> but it does I mean everyone I didn't meet many people yet I didn't meet that many people yesterday when I was walking around the hills but um, I met a few and just everyone's buzzing you know, people are saying hello before they're even several metres away from you. Because it's like, hello, hello, isn't it? Oh, it's so beautiful. Everyone's just... And then everyone says, oh, it's so nice to have a nice, cold, proper winter for a change. Everyone likes it. It makes makes people happy when it's like this, instead of the sort of the usual slush and horrid stuff. Although I'm sure there are people who are getting sick of it, even though the ardent snow lovers are probably now thinking, oh, God, just enough. This just doesn't seem to stop. I don't count me among those. I want more. Right. Let's pack up. Head off. Right. Let's do this. the view, but as you'd expect from the highest point in Fife, really good view that way, all this cloud and murk coming in and East Lomond still just catching the sunshine just as we are, fast retreating though, it's quite a sight, this the hill up here is just this is all just covered in really crusty rime, but you go just a little way down and it's gloriously snowy, soft snow, really nice. That's where we were hours ago, <laughs> probably, on the top of East Lomond. We've come all this way. A really, really great pair of hills, I think most folk would agree. Throughout the course of all this snow, of the last few weeks, I think I've explored as much as you could reasonably expect. Bishop Hill, East Lomond, West Lomond in snowy conditions made absolute full use of this amazing weather. It's been memorable. A memorable lockdown for all kinds of reasons. Right, it's now 10 to 3. It's time to head down. <laughs> 